Good day everyone, this is Doc Ina and this is a special topic I made for the medical clerks rotating in OBGYN department. Uh, this is a video tutorial and review of a second degree epigeography. So first, let's uh, do a quick review of a midline and a medial lateral episiotomy. The picture on your left is a midline episiotomy where the incision is made at the 6 o'clock position of the perineum. The picture on the right is a right medial lateral episiotomy where the incision is placed at the 7 o'clock position. We can also do a left medial lateral episiotomy by placing the incision at the 5 o'clock position. Doing a left or a right medial lateral episiotomy will depend on the handedness of the surgeon. The midline episiotomy has so many or so much more advantages over doing a medial lateral episiotomy. Uh, for a midline episiotomy, the surgical repair is easier, faulty healing is rare, postoperative pain is minimal, anatomical results are excellent. There's less blood loss for a midline episiotomy, and dyspareunia is rare for a midline episiotomy. The only disadvantage of a midline episiotomy over medial lateral is that a fourth degree extension is more common. Here are the degrees of uh, laceration. We have four degrees of laceration. The first degree laceration involves the fourchet, the perineal skin, and the vaginal mucous membrane. Second degree lacerations involve anything that involves the first degree laceration plus the fascia and the muscles of the perineal body. The muscles of the perineal body include the bulbar cavernosus muscles and the superficial transverse perineal muscles. Third degree lacerations involve anything that involves the third, second degree laceration plus the external anal sphincter. Fourth degree laceration involves everything that is involved in the third degree laceration plus the internal anal sphincter and the rectal mucosa. The goals of epigeography is to restore hemostasis and anatomical restoration without excessive suturing. Here are the steps in doing a second degree epigeography. So step one, prepare the instruments needed. So as shown in this picture, we have the gloves needle holder, tissue forceps, a pair of scissors, and of course, a suture. We, pre we prefer Chromic 2O suture with cutting needle. For this video tutorial, we will not uh, showcase a live actual patient, but instead, we will use just a block of meat to practice our epigeography. Step 2 is to identify the angle of epigeography. Step 3 is suture the vaginal mucosa starting 1 cm above the angle. Step 4 is to reapproximate the vaginal mucosa, submucosa, and cut margins of the hymenal ring by continuous suture or continuous interlocking sutures. So just to illustrate, here is a video showing to you steps 3 and 4. So first, we do the first stitch 1 cm above the angle of episiotomy. We secure the first stitch using a square knot by doing a square knot. Just two throws will do. And then proceed to doing continuous interlocking suture until the hymenal ring is reapproximated. So notice here that I'm reapproximating the cut edges of the vaginal mucosa and the 
as you can see the needle is inserted within the loop of the suture to make an interlocking stitch So, continue doing the continuous interlocking until you reapproximate the hymenal ring. Or until you reach the edge of uh, this practice meet that you have. Once you have reapproximated the hymenal ring, close the suture by making a knot. Step 5 is place 3 to 4 interrupted sutures or continuous stitches in the fascia or muscle of the incised perineum. Step 6 is to reapproximate the skin by using subcuticular stitches. So here is a video to demonstrate to you steps 5 and 6. So to be able to repair the perineum, we have to bite into the vagina and exit the needle through the perineum like so. So once in the perineal area, you can start doing either interrupted stitches or in, uh, continuous stitches. I prefer doing continuous stitches to reapproximate the perineal muscles such as seen in this video. So just continue doing the continuous stitches until you reach the end of the cut. You probably will be making two or three stitches for this one. So once you're done closing the perineum muscles, proceed to closing the skin using subcuticular stitches. Notice here that I'm doing the backhand technique. Please note how I handle the needle holder and the needle. So you do subcuticular stitches from the bottom of the perineum all the way up into the vagina. So just continue doing the subcuticular stitches until you reach the vaginal area. Or in this case, until you reach the top margin of the slab of meat. So there. So once you reach the vagina, or in this case, the upper edge of the meat, you close the stitch by doing a knot.
So after doing the knot, you can cut the sutures. So once we are done with our suturing, step 7 is to check for hemostasis, check for any bleeders inside the vagina, and lastly, step 8, perform a rectal exam by checking integrity of the repair and the presence of sutures that breaches the rectal mucosa. This is a very important last step since we don't want uh, for rectal vaginal fistula to develop. In repairing a medial lateral second degree episiotomy, same steps also apply or the same principles also apply as in the midline episiotomy. For the third degree repair, we do end-to-end -end anastomosis of the external sphincter. For a fourth degree vaginal tear, we do layered repair starting from the rectal mucosa and up. So we start first with the repairing the rectal mucosa followed by the fascia and then the external and anal, external anal sphincter, internal anal sphincter, and then the vaginal mucosa. So just a review of the eight steps of a second degree epithelography. First is to prepare the instruments needed. Second, identify the angle of epithelography. Step three, suture the vaginal mucosa starting one cm above the angle. Step 4, reapproximate the vaginal mucosa, submucosa, and cut margins of the hymenal ring by doing either a continuous suture or a continuous interlocking suture. Step 5 is to place 3 to 4 interrupted sutures or uh, continuous stitches in the fascia or muscle of the incised perineum. Step 6, reapproximate the skin by using subcuticular stitch. Step 7, check for hemostasis and lastly step 8 perform rectal exam by checking the integrity of the repair and the presence of sutures breaching the rectal mucosa thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe in my youtube channel ina erabon or my wordpress site doc ina obigaine thank you